Scythes look cool, they feel badass, and everyone wants to look like the Grim Reaper. But did you know that scythes were never used as a weapon? They are actually used as an agricultural hand tool for mowing grass or reaping crop. I know this is kind of a buzzkill, but looking at the bright side, scythes in the Dark Souls series are more than just a farmer tool. They fall under the weapon category Reaper Weapons in Dark Souls 3. They are trickster weapons deployed only for the most dedicated and disciplined undead as they demand its wielders all in order to succeed. Instead of having high damage and simple attack trajectories like most weapons, they have weird and all over the place attack trajectories and hitboxes with low damage. They also demand high accuracy due to the sweet spot mechanic, where if you hit somebody right at the edge of the scythe, you will deal extra damage and also increase stun potential. Although scythes are farmer tools, there are some very prominent bosses who wield this weapon class across the series. Lady Elfrida wields a scythe in Dark Souls 3. Nashandra, the vanilla final boss of Dark Souls 2, also wields a scythe. Crossbreed Priscilla in Dark Souls 1, also found in a painted world just like Lady Elfrida, wields a scythe too. If you notice, most scythe wielders in Dark Souls series are female for some reason. But I think the most prominent boss that wields a scythe is German, the first hunter from Bloodborne. Even the scythe he wields has the coolest moveset. There are four scythes in Dark Souls 3. Three of them are in the base game and one of them is in the first DLC. Which one is the best ladies and gentlemen? Let's find out. Before we begin, let's point important facts regarding Scythes in Dark Souls 3. Number 1. They got patched multiple times. They were too weak and outclassed, plus their weapon arts were literally the worst in the game. However, after all the patches, they are viable now and can at least compete with other classes. Number 2. Scythes follow the sweet spot mechanic rule. Halberds function in the same manner. The damage you deal depends on which part of the weapon you hit. Missing the sweet spot means reduced damage, therefore being accurate with your attacks are heavily rewarded. Furthermore, hitting human players in online PvP with your sweet spot result in odd stun locks. You can stun or interrupt players during their hyper armor frames, even if they have the poise to withstand it. This is really odd and one of a kind, however, I never tested it in depth but it doesn't feel very consistent anyways. So take this info with a grain of salt, but regardless of that, still very interesting from a PvP perspective. Number 3. Three of the base sites in the game have identical movesets, except the weapon arts. Two of them are identical, while one of them is unique. This is very disappointing to be honest, but looking at the bright side from my perspective, it at least makes this video way easier to create. The fourth and final point, the animation on the criticals are desperately abysmally, fantastically, horribly, disgustingly, I might just create a word just to make this longer, hilariously, agonizingly, super duper lazy. Just why from software? Why? The first site we're going to be discussing in this video is the Great Site. Found in the Undead Settlement, it's an early weapon you can find in the playthrough. It's found in every Dark Souls game. It was literally one of the best, if not the best weapon in Dark Souls 1. But this trend stopped there, as the Dark Souls 2 version can be summed up in one word. Crap. Total, utter crap. Just like all the other sites in Dark Souls 2. At least this version is fun to use. Despite its high scaling and dexterity, it's best when it's refined and fused, so a quality build will work best with this. With 40 strength and 40 dexterity build, it has 400 damage. It's a bit better with the hollow build, with 40 strength, 40 dexterity and 40 luck, you get 423 damage and it will retain its original bleeding potential. But a hollow build requires a lot more careful planning and requires more stats especially on a meta build. So I don't think the extra 23 damage is justifiable. It is also a good contender for elemental damage. Infusing it with either lightning or crystal slash magic gems will give you a scaling of A while dark and chaos gives B scaling for intelligence and B scaling for faith. Its weapon art, Neck Swipe, has been drastically improved after the patches. 
It's your only attack with this weapon that gives you access to hyper armor frames. So it is your only attack that you can use to trade with your enemies without getting interrupted. It mostly always stuns your enemy, especially in PvP. Also after patch, landing this weapon art on NPCs, human-like enemies and human players will result in your opponents going into the headshot animation stun lock which previously was only found by headshotting somebody with an arrow. This makes sense since this weapon art is called neck swipe and it states that this attack is aimed at the head. So this is a new cool addition to this weapon art. I really like the moveset on the sights. They are just very different compared to other weapons. They are more directional and once you play with them enough, using the appropriate attack in the right time becomes second nature to you. The most notable attack is the one-handed backstep or running light attack. It covers a lot of range and it's a roll catcher. Another notable one is the one-handed heavy attack. The one-handed light attacks comes out very quick and they connect really nicely. The last point for this weapon is that it can always be buffed with resins. Since it has higher bleed than most weapons in the game, buffing it with Karthus Rouge can wreak havoc, since you can bleed most enemies with a couple of hits, but if you're not aiming for bleed, you can always buff it with other resins or spells. So the best two ways to play with this weapon is to either have a quality or hollow build with Karthus Rouge, or a quality or dex build with a spell buff like Dark Moon Blade or Crystal Magic Weapon. However, it will be more difficult to buff it on a meta level build, but, it definite, but it's definitely possible and effective. Of course, if you are very high leveled and don't care about the meta, a quality build plus a spell buff is the way to go. So the good things going for the Great Scythe is its high bleed potential, it can be buffed and infused, you can grab it very early in the game, and like all other scythes, it has a very good moveset and can deal high damage if you hit with your sweet spot. It also has low weight, and finally, its weapon art is fairly good. The bad things going for the Great Scythe is its low damage in general, and like all other scythes, it's very easy to parry. The second scythe we're going to be discussing is the Great Corvian Scythe. Dropped by Corvians in the Road of Sacrifices, this is yet another very early weapon you can grab in your playthrough. One of the things I like about it is its foreshadowing of the first DLC. The description states, Great Scythe of the Forlorn Souls guided by heretical storytellers. The mistress of the painted world is set to wield the Great Scythe herself. Great Scythes inflict profuse bleeding such that the blood splatters on the wielder. One unique but still bad thing going for this weapon is it inflicts bleed on its wielder with every attack, similar to how the Life Hunt Scythe from Dark Souls 1 functioned. So the possibility of bleeding yourself while using this is a real concern, especially when you fight a human player that inflicts bleed too, or in the long PvE fights where red blossoms become a necessity. However, this can be offset by equipping the Blood Bite Ring which increases your bleed resistance. Since this is a bleed weapon, going with a hollow build is quite good, definitely better than the Great Scythe. With a hollow build, when one-handed, it does 451 damage, while the Great Scythe does 423 damage. This is when your stats are 40 in dexterity, strength and luck. However, you only gain 3 extra damage with a hollow build compared to a quality build. So I think a quality build might be better due to a more efficient build as the extra stats won't go to the luck stat. This weapon is also the best scythe for elemental infusions. It's much better than the Great Scythe, however the Great Scythe has a tad bit more damage than the Caribbean Scythe when going with a dexterity build with sharp infusion. But going back to the elemental weapons, this scythe gets a stronger A scaling for either magic or lightning and gets a double A for chaos and dark which makes it one of the best elemental scaling weapons in the game. And when it comes to its moveset and weapon art, it's identical to the Great Scythe. I always thought of this weapon as the best scythe in Dark Souls 3, especially compared to the Great Scythe, however, I don't think this now, after looking into it, the shorter range and self bleed are pretty bad. Although these two scythes are similar, the difference is that the Great Scythe is less punishing and weighs just 7 units, but deals a bit less damage, while the Corvian Great Scythe is more punishing, weighs 9 units, but has more damage, but the damage difference is not that big to justify the self bleed, so it will be down to preference in what scythe you like. But for elemental infusions, it's clear as day that the Corvian Scythe is just better. The good things going for the Caribbean Great Scythe is its high bleed potential, it can be buffed and infused, it's the best elemental scythe, and it has all the positive traits from the Great Scythe. The bad things going for the Caribbean Great Scythe is its self-inflicting bleed, short range, weak damage, and it's very easy to parry. 
The third scythe we're going to be discussing in this video is Pontiff Knight Great Scythe. It's a drop from Pontiff Scythe wielding enemy found in front of Pontiff Sullivan's boss room. This weapon cannot be buffed nor infused, so there is only one way of using it, and that is on a dexterity build since it has S scaling for dexterity, but for some odd reason, it requires 12 faith. With 50 dexterity and 14 strength, you'll get 402 damage, which is 2 more damage than having 40 strength, 40 dexterity refined great sight. So you can actually reach great sight's damage just by leveling up one stat instead of two. So your build can have more passive stats with prolonged survival. However, this weapon cannot be buffed like the great sight. So the great sight will have more damage with just about any buff. Its weapon art is unique and useless too since there is another scythe that does the same thing but just way better. It buffs your weapon with frostbite for about 30 seconds, the initial area of effect also inflicts frostbite. But since this weapon doesn't naturally inflict frostbite, this 30 second window is too small to do anything effective. Also by having this weapon art, you sacrifice your only way of having hyper armor frames. So this weapon has no hyper armor in any way shape or form and it's the only sight like that. The only reason I can see somebody using this is either the build is focused on high dexterity only or the wielder just doesn't like to bother with buffs so takes this instead of the great sight. The good things going for the Pontiff Knight great sight is it's very high scaling in dexterity and it's good moveset. The bad things going for the Pontiff Knight Great Sight is that it cannot be infused nor buffed, it's low damage, it has useless weapon art, doesn't have hyper armor, it doesn't inflict bleed, and it requires little investment in the faith stat. The fourth and final sight we're going to be discussing in this video is Frida's Great Sight found by killing Lady Elfrida in the Painted Ward of Ariandel, which is the first DLC, and then buying the weapon from Ludleth in Firelink Shrine. This weapon is the only scythe that has a different moveset than the rest of the weapons in this class, although just partly, since the one-handed moveset is still identical. The two major changes here are the two-handed light attacks and the weapon art. This scythe has an A scaling for both dexterity and intelligence. That's the reason why you have both physical and magical damage on this weapon but the normal moveset inflicts only physical damage. In order to get access to the magical damage, you need to use the weapon art, which you should be aiming for since this is what makes this scythe super unique. But if you want, you can just have dexterity and still use this weapon just fine, but the weapon art will be significantly weaker. With 40 dexterity and 40 intelligence, your damage will be 649, 257 of it is physical damage, 392 of it is physical damage. So when it comes to builds, it's best to have 40 in dexterity and 40 in intelligence with this weapon. After that, you can either add magic spells or increase your passive stats. It's really up to you. The two-handed moveset has three different attacks in a row, which is already unique as few weapons can do that. In PvP, even if you miss your first attack, you can still land the second and the third attacks guaranteed, which is also great. Now, when it comes to the weapon art of this weapon, it changes the way you look at scythes. It's just so beast hitting stuff with this thing. It has two different weapon arts. The weapon art into a light attack will open up a whole new moveset. It's a three attack combo, but it does hit way more than three times. It gives you hyper armor, one of the most important things in the game, so you don't just have a new beastly moveset, you can actually wreck havoc without any interruption even if you get hit. Of course, it always depends on what weapon or what type of weapon you get hit with. So don't expect to hyper armor through heavy hammer attacks. But still, this is one of the reasons this scythe is just top tier weapon all around. This move also inflicts very high damage and you can cover a lot of ground with it so you can catch fleeing opponents with ease. The second weapon art, which is the weapon art into a heavy attack, does a hit that unleashes an AoE frostbite attack. Very useful for crowd control, and if you succeed with hitting the scythe and then the frostbite, you will deal tremendous damage. This move also has hyper armor frames that can be further strengthened by adding poise. Now since this weapon inflicts frostbite with every attack, it makes Pontiff's Knight Great Scythe weapon art inferior and ultimately useless. So the good things going for Frida's Great Scythe is it's absolutely crazy weapon art, it's weapon art also deals very high damage, it's a very versatile weapon, 
can inflict frostbite easily especially when paired with a deep freeze spell and it also has better range than most scythes. The bad things going free that for free this great scythe is that it cannot be buffed nor infused and it requires specific builds to shine which can hamper your survivability on a meta level build. So these are all the scythes in Dark Souls 3 at this point of time. They might add more scythes in the upcoming DLC. But I also forgot to mention another good thing that is going for the scythes and that is that they can go through shields, partially at least, which means you can be a nightmare for somebody who depends on their shield. So that we got this out of the way, what is the best scythe in Dark Souls 3? The best scythe in Dark Souls 3 is... Frida's Great Scythe. It's just a total beast, and the boss who wields it further proves that. You just can never go wrong with it, either be PvP or PvE. However, it just barely wins over the Great Scythe. The Great Scythe and the Curvian Scythe, to some degree, have insane bleed capabilities which can make some boss fights a joke. Also the reason for this is that Frida's Scythe only works on hybrid builds while the Great Scythe can uh, be used in multitude of different ways since it can be buffed and infused but still Frida's Great Scythe is the king of scythes. Not just in Dark Souls 3 but in the whole series as well although I have a certain affinity to the Life Hunt Scythe from Dark Souls 1. My next video in the series will be either the best great hammer or the best spear in Dark Souls 3. I will pick one of them depending on what you guys want. So let me know which one you would like to see in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps out a ton. Thanks for watching everyone. Farewell.